Hello everyone, I am Safir and welcome to another devlog. As you may know, I am currently developing a top view shooter RPG that will take place in a world populated with animals and where you control an, a fox bounty hunter. With this game, I am trying to emulate uh, the JRPG game I used to play when I was a kid like Final Fantasy, Suikoden, Chrono Cross, and many other games that Squaresoft used to do back in those days. At the current state of the game, I develop the main control for the character, as well as some key components of the gameplay, like an inventory system, an interaction function, where you can interact with various objects, like, I don't know, crate you want to open, button push to open doors, as well as some basic attacks. What I'd like to do before developing the combat system in depth right now is to set up the first level of the game where the prologue will take place. It's a huge work to do, especially for a solo game dev like me, and I expect it to take a few weeks uh, before I get a final that I will be happy with. Today I will talk about level design and my process to build this first level. So let's get started. When I started, my knowledge of level design was pretty low. You can even say non-existent. And I didn't know where to start. I play a lot of video games and as a player I can feel it when a game is smart with its level mechanics and when the game makes you want to explore more areas in a way that it is interesting and comfortable to do so versus something redundant or boring. As a developer, my goal is to give the player an agreeable experience, hopefully something he will remember. So my first question was, how can I make interesting levels? So I decided to educate myself in this topic by following an environment design course made by Emilia Schwartz, a current co-lead game designer at Naughty Dog, in a hope to grasp some useful knowledge from her. I am currently at mid-course and so far what I can say is that I learned quite a bit about player's pattern, how to guide a player in the key areas and how to compose a level. With those new concepts in my head, I started my work on the level by drawing it on paper first. As I previously wrote the story of the game, I had rough ideas of what the level need to look like and which necessary areas I needed to trigger some event. My game takes place in a world similar to Japan, so it is expected to have some Japanese architecture and a lot of natural elements. For the prologue, I need a roadside, a forest with a river, a bridge, and a luxurious Japanese estate. I draw a map incorporating those key elements with a main path that will guide the player to the main quest event, as well as secondary path inviting the player to explore further and rewarding him with some special loot and additional story elements. The fun part was to create different road the player would take and based on that imagine some environmental details that would tell a story. When I finished drawing the map, I switched to Blender and started blocking a basic layout. It is important when starting this process that you compare the scale units between Blender and Unity to avoid scaling issue later. I also build a procedural metric shader that will apply a grid to all faces of the geos. Every square of the grid is equal to one meter. As it's a parametric shader, it doesn't need UVs to display the texture and it's based on a world space projection, meaning no matter how much you scale up or down your geo, the texture will always have the initial tiling you set up in the shader graph. During this process, it was a back and forth between Blender and Unity. 
to double check if everything feels good, adjusting the path size and other scaling issue. So everything is modeled in Blender uh, for my own reason. Um, I, I know some people use uh, Pro Builder to do uh, the layout of the, their level design uh, into Unity, but I will not use uh, this tool because I want to have the freedom to just export the geo into uh, other software package so I can do um, much more detailed um, geo. And also I think uh, Blender is a more powerful modeling tool than uh, ProBuilder. So this is why. So the blocking will be uh, into Blender, the main blocking. I divide it into multiple parts <clears throat> in case uh, the game is too heavy to load and I have to um, create multiple scenes, but I will try to not do that by maintaining a uh, low number of polygons. But it's divided in three parts. So you have the roadside, um, <clears throat> you have the park that will lead on a bridge to cross before heading to the manors, manor of the bad guy. Uh, the key. And uh, that's pretty much it for the modeling. Um, I created the road path quickly. Uh, this might change in the future depending how I feel uh, when I play it. If it's too confusing, um, I will have to uh, do some play test for it. But anyway, for now it's okay. Uh, I put everything in Unity already. Now the layout was ready to be used in game, I needed some trees. I modeled five variations of them and quickly this question came. How am I going to scatter them in my scene? Placing every prefab trees, scaling them and rotating them manually was a big no to me as it takes too much time. Fortunately, I found that Unity provides a scatter tool called Polybrush. So I downloaded the package and gave it a try. Since it's lunchtime and have an hour, a free hour to kill and a coffee to drink, I just had a look at, um, how do you call it, a Polybrush? Because I need a solution to scatter my uh, mid-detail uh, geo, like trees, um, grass, rocks, um, any environmental element that I don't want to do it manually, and I just want a random rotation and scaling. And I think I will use a pulley brush for this, uh, because it's it's pretty cool, pretty quick to set up, um, and I think it will do uh, what I'm looking for. Um, after that, I'm looking at how I will do my shaders. Uh, right now, I'm not sure I will use Polybrush to, to paint, to shader paint uh, the surface. I think I will... Um, do it manually into the uh, shader editor, shader graph. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Uh, I know you can set up this, but I'm not sure it will be precise enough for me. I don't know. I need to do some tests uh, later. I'm not sure I will have time uh, this week. But it's something I uh, will have a look on. So now this is just my uh, pulley brush test, nothing fancy. I just plug checkerboard texture and uh, white texture. And I use a uh, geo directly from Unity. 
just to do my test. Tonight I'll try to um, work on uh, my uh, on the level specifically with the trees I model and maybe soon do some grass modeling. But yeah, anyway, I think my lunch time is done and I have to go back to work. So we'll see that uh, tonight. Painting trees with poly brush in the scene was quite fun to do and pretty fast actually. I end up the day with a decent blocking layout. The trees had a good amount of variation. Later, I will replace my current low poly geo with some more fancy looking trees, but for now, it will do the job. Last step of the level building was to create some assets that I will use to set dress the scene. I already have some rocks, but I will need some grass, bushes, maybe flowers, as well as some architectural element. So I started modeling some kitbash assets. I made modulate Japan style walls, some tori structure, some stones lantern, and some other small elements that will be useful and make sense in my world. I spent some time to remodel the more detailed bridge as well as the Japanese estate. This is currently the state of my game with quick but basic color shader on it so it's not all gray and the bird forest loops on to make the scene more alive. There is obviously a lot of work to do left but I can now use this base for concept art paint over that will help me to find the art direction of the game. But this is a topic for a future day vlog and that's it for today. Uh, I hope it was interesting for you to follow. If you are interested to know more about my games and follow the development, subscribe to this channel. I would very appreciate it. And for now, take care and I'll see you later. Cheers!